Good morning. Do hope that all is well with you all this morning as you join us for morning prayer. It is just me this morning. Um, so, uh, sorry about this. Um, anyway, it's a delightful morning and I pray that as we come to morning prayer today, we may know God's goodness. I know some of us are struggling at the moment for all sorts of different reasons, uh, either reasons of health or all sorts of different reasons, but um, let's hope that we can um, know God's goodness, his mercy and his healing this day. And for those of us that are in a position where we're in a space where we're enjoying life, when all is not great, but everything is good, um, we hope that we can embrace that too. So, uh, yeah, doing, do we hope that we can uh, pray together this morning and um, embrace all that God has for us. If you want to um, uh, make any comments as we come to prayer this morning, then do just pop them in the comments and hopefully I'll spot them. And uh, we can integrate that into our prayer together. Our readings today, I've listed, I'm going to use Psalms um, 20 and 20, oh, did I say 20 and, I think I said 20 and, yeah, 20 and 23. And then we've got um, Romans chapter 6, 15 to the end. If you want to read the Job section, it's Job 12, Job, Job chapter 12. He's, Job is replying to one of his friends again. So again, you need to perhaps go back to 11 if you've not done that, just to get the flow of what's going on there. Right, so let's just still our hearts and minds as we come before God this morning. The cycle of prayer of the church, we're remembering Boniface today. Um, Bishop and Apostle of Germany and a martyr. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself. So my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Brings us to Psalm 20. May the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Send your help from his sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your mind. May we rejoice in your salvation and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord perform all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will save his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the mighty strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will call only on the name of the Lord our God. 
They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. O Lord, save the King and answer us when we call upon you. Most well known of Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So we continue in Romans, we've got to Romans chapter 6. Paul still wrestling with how the law um, works in the new covenant in Christ. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. But just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let's hold to those amazing words. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Benedictus, blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. 
in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of God, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so we intercede on behalf of those whom we love this day, our homes, our families, our friends. And we give thanks for friends who uh, support and uphold us in times of trouble. Same for our families, for all who surround us and support us in good times and in challenging times. Well, we pray for the safety and sanctity of our homes. We give, give you, Lord, thanks for um, those places of safety that we can enjoy. And Lord, we lift to you those who home, whose homes are not places of safety and security. Lord, may your hand of protection be over those whose homes are a place of challenge. Lord, as we think of home life, as we think of family life, Lord, we give thanks for all those whose time is spent caring for others in illness, in other conditions, praying particularly for those who um, support those who live with dementia in all its forms. Lord, support them, uphold them in the challenges that there are in being a full-time carer, not for those of us that provide care from distance. Lord, give those who care patience, endurance, and time for themselves, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who, in the midst of these things, are, are, find it difficult to hang on to, hold on to the hope that you give. Lord, may you pour out your blessing this day. May those who struggle to live in hope know the flood of your love your compassion, your mercy. May that be shown by others. May they see it in practical ways in this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, today we sit on the eve of, of the Christian Sabbath and we lift our worship to you. That's preparation today or that's going over in the week, Lord, may bear fruit as we come to worship you. Lord, we pray that we can worship in spirit and in truth, that we can receive from you, that we may give. And Lord, we pray for all of those within our church who facilitate the work of the church, who seek to help with its organisation and its structure. And Lord, in that we pray today with the Diocesan Secretary and his team in Worcester. Pray for them in the midst of the moves that they're undertaking, move taking to, um, to more effective and um, more, uh, hopefully, we hope, more green um, uh, premises. Lord, we pray for John Preston, the Diocese Secretary, for Rob Corton, the Assistant Secretary with Responsibility for the Transformation Programme, for Emma Wollaston and Judith Nex. Lord, we pray for them. We give thanks for their many, many skills and gifts. We pray for their wisdom and for that you may bless them with more. And for their effectiveness as they manage the administration and governance of the church across Worcestershire and a little bit beyond. As we think of your church, we pray for dioceses around the world. And today we pray for a diocese in the UK, for Carlisle, Bishop James. Um, James Scobie Newcomb. Lord, we pray for that incredibly rural diocese. We pray for all that they do across that um, beautiful but uh, remote area. So, Lord, bless them, keep them, 
May they follow your leading. Amen. So Lord, as we come to this day, as we look out and see the beauty of this day, Lord, may we see your beauty in it. May we know that you are a God that loves us, that holds us in all that life throws at us. And Lord, as a nation, as we um, listen to news about what is going to be happening over the coming weeks, Lord, we pray for your security, for your hand of protection over our nation. Lord, we pray that your, you will be with our leaders, with Boris Johnson, with others who lead us, that they may follow uh, your leading and not be uh, driven by, by selfish ambition or by the selfish ambition of others. And Lord, we thought about it so uh, uh, <laughs> to pray about kings in the Psalms. And Lord, we pray for our queen. Lord, we pray for her as she provides that, that key or within, uh, within that what it is to be British. So Lord, we're with her as she prepares to worship tomorrow too, like the rest of us. Lord, pour out your goodness this day. May you know that we love you and may we hold to that truth in the knowledge of your love for us. So God, our Redeemer, who called your servant Boniface to preach the gospel among the German people and to build up your church in holiness, grant that we may preserve in our hearts that faith which he taught with his words and sealed with his blood and profess it in lives dedicated to your Son, Jesus our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for uh, being uh, alongside me this morning. Those that have joined uh, live, thanks so much. And for those that join later in the day, thank you uh, for joining with us. I'm sorry, I think there was a little glitch early on where my internet seemed to drop in and out strangely. Don't know what that was about. Hopefully that didn't uh, spoil things too much. It's been a pleasure to pray with alongside you this morning and look forward to joining with some of you in person or online tomorrow. Every blessing. See you all next week.